Great. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to talk through this webinar first. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Upgrow for uh, giving us this opportunity to deal with uh, a very interesting topic on uh, roads and water. And the third, I would like also to, to thank the consortium who gave me the opportunity to present this presentation on the behalf on behalf of the whole uh, the whole team. And the presentation that I'm going to make is on rural roads for recharge uh, in Ethiopia. This has been a research which was going on for the last one year, and we are going to share uh, the whole uh, audience now uh, on the output of this, this, this project. The whole project dream has been to, to have roads systematically used for groundwater recharge and retention, and also for uh, storage all over Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, there is uh, a number of reasons why we came to this type of dream. And to talk about that, I'm going to have uh, this outline of presentation, some introductory part on the issues related to water and roads, on the hydrological effects of road development, on the role of partners, especially in the implementation of the different technologies to harvest water from roads, on the techniques which have been implemented, the effects which have been obtained, and the opportunities for upscaling the different uh, opportunities which you have. Just to start with the introduction, well, I think we all know that uh, these days road development is one of the major uh, investments in many sub-Saharan Africa, especially, for example, in Ethiopia. And uh, we did a reconnaissance of about 200 kilometers of road, and we have identified about 260 problems. All of them were related to water. We also did a socioeconomic survey of this of about 100 kilometer road, and then we have identified loss of livelihood opportunities because of gully and associated problems and also litigation. And uh, we also found that distributional effect because the poor and the rich couldn't be able to be affected by this type of problem. We also managed to get the evidence that there is a governance issue which needs to be looked at. That means no community engagement were there in the whole planning of roads in most cases. No connection between road development authorities and the other, especially with water uh, development and the agricultural offices. And there is a limited road design guideline on incorporating options of water harvesting from roads. And uh, some budget procedures uh, are not conducive because uh, if you have, for example, a road which is designed based on standard certain budget uh, uh, outline, and if you want to modify to harvest water, because it's not in the uh, initial uh, contractual agreement, then this has resulted in a number of uh, problems related to the uh, water and roads. So the effect that we monitored, one is there is increase in erosion of local streams. Uh, we identified about 150 problems related to erosion. This is the one example. This is one example in Ethiopia, but I think uh, what we should really uh, know is uh, these problems, especially what you see on, the, uh, on this part, is the gully development, which took place in one year after the construction of this road. And uh, we also have identified uh, sedimentation or siltation problems in 15 locations, and it has caused a number of problems. Even farmers had to uh, plow their farm for three times uh, during the uh, rainy season. It also altered subsurface uh, water flow, which is mainly uh, the uh, groundwater flow. Water logging in the upstream areas was uh, also identified, and local flooding is also a major problem. So the whole dream of this project has been we are dealing with concentrated runoff. And this concentrated runoff, if properly managed, can be converted into something which is beneficial. So 
this is some farmers showing the level of water which has reached during the flood time in their house. So as, as we already mentioned, flooding is one of the major uh, problems. And the role of the different partners in the implementation. When we try to implement options of water harvesting from roads, uh, from this catalyst grant, which involved McKellar University, MetaMeta, Meta, IDS, uh, SOSEX, we are the three uh, leading uh, research partners. But we have implemented that with different organizations like the Theory Bureau of Agriculture and Rural Development, WERADA offices, the communities, road contractors, and consultants were involved in the whole process of demonstrating water harvesting for groundwater recharge and also retention in Ethiopia. So what we did first was we gave some training. These are uh, over 350 different participants on the top of the photo, as you could see. Uh, these are people who are implementing the natural resource management in the, in the whole region. So we gave them uh, uh, a training to create awareness on the possibility of water harvesting from roads. And then, as you could see on the lower part, the different specialty the Agricultural Bureau of Agriculture, and also the contractors, the consultants discussing on how to manage this runoff from the culvert for beneficial use as demonstration. So the techniques which have been implemented, I think this was part of the whole moisture program of the Tigray region. So the region has taken this idea uh, to be implemented throughout the region as part of the moisture conservation. And then over 30 waragas of the region have implemented different techniques. And most of the techniques were implemented by the local community. As you could see, a farmer with his, with his uh, son trying to divert runoff from a culvert into a percolation pond for supplementary irrigation as well as for groundwater recharge. So the different techniques, one is the construction of a deep trench at downstream of roads to enhance groundwater. So as you could see, this is done only in one year. So this is one example of the different techniques. Otherwise, all these techniques have been implemented almost throughout uh, many parts of the region. In some, you see that along the roads, they have built different types of uh, uh, pits. And this is, again, as part of the conservation which was done in the uh, uh, last year. That means the roadside ponds to recharge groundwater and also to uh, uh, reduce uh, erosion of the roadside. Roadside runoff diverted into ponds. As you could see, this is a pond. And then roadside runoff is channeled into this pond. Water from a culvert channeled into farmland. As you could see, this is a, a culvert. And then water is being channeled and then used to uh, act as a supplementary to, con uh, uh, to, to, this, to this land. And uh, this is one of the techniques which is implemented. Otherwise, many sites have been uh, uh, have implemented this type of technique. Roadside runoff channeled into farmland. As you could see, this is a road and this is a roadside. And the, what the farmers are trying to do is channeling this uh, uh, runoff into the into the farmland, which now it's becoming like almost in you know, a once they are able to, to 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 obtain moisture. There is a lot of competition coming now. Uh, in this in this uh, uh, in this regard, then the other is uh, runoff from a town. This, for example, from a town which is called Froeni, is channeled into. Uh, as you could see, uh, here is the culvert, and this culvert is channeled into a borrow pit. So they are harvesting uh, the runoff from the from the from the town into uh, uh, to act as a groundwater recharge in this area. Water from a culvert is channeled into check dam. Here is a road, here is a check dam, and here is a well. This well was dry before the construction of the check dam, but last year they built this check dam and this well started to, uh, as you could see, yield a very uh, good amount of water, which is irrigating now about 1.5 hectare of land. Water from a culvert is spread into series of deep trenches, as you could see, is a culvert, and the water is channeled into 
these different uh, percolation systems, deep trends, and this is again one of the techniques which is, which is introduced. Water from a bridge, there is a bridge, and you could see a series of percolation systems are the deep trench and so on. Again, a well is developed here. Again, this is especially the well development was done last year. The deep trench were also constructed last year, but water has been flowing through the bridge throughout. And the last, the, the lower part is, as you could see, this was a roadside drainage, which was constructed three, four years ago. But last year, they built a percolation pond here, as you could see, to recharge the groundwater at downstream air. Uh, so effect of this water harvesting from roads, one, the implementation of water harvesting from road integral has gone beyond piloting program. The whole project was to pilot something, but it has gone beyond the piloting. The techniques applied are highly variable depending on site condition. And honestly, most of them were very innovative. Then locally, with very small uh, uh, support by by the uh, uh, you know professionals in a way, except trying to indicate the technologies and also to monitor the situation. Monitoring has only focused to specific sites, which, so we couldn't monitor all the sites because it has been implemented uh, in over uh, 30 waradas. So I think we have to know that this is what we are going to present to you on the results of the implementation is only for 10 sites. So what the effects are? These are the implemented technology and the effects. For example, with deep trends at the downstream side of the road, we managed to observe an increase in the groundwater level. And then some of them were used to be dry and now became uh, productive. And the moisture content of the soil has improved up 50%. That means we want, because we know the, the, the site previously with other projects, so we managed to monitor what was the effect. The roadside ponds, again, the moisture of the soil has improved a lot. And the farmers even, they recognized the importance of this uh, conservation. The roadside runoff diverted into ponds also. You have new uh, surface water, which is used for supplementary as well as for groundwater recharge. Water from a culvert channel to farmland, again, the moisture content has been improved and roadside runoff is channeled into farmland, and this has reduced erosion, and uh, in many cases, it has halted it. And then, in, so, in, in some cases, when the runoff is very high, it has reduced up to 30%. That means still there is more recharge, that uh, harvesting of surface runoff that needs to be, to be there. What is the potential for upscaling or outscaling? Honestly, we have found out that the link between road development, groundwater, livelihood issue has never been there. So the potential for upscaling of water harvesting from road to the whole region and beyond is very high for a number of reasons. One, the negative effects of road could be changed into positive one because the Ethiopian Roads Authority, for example, have identified that about 35% of the road, of the damage to roads is related to water. So if we can manage water, we can manage the roads, we can manage the water, and then we ensure the uh, water security. There is water scarcity in the arid to semi-arid regions of Ethiopia. So water is becoming a very important asset to the rural poor. So I think we need to take this opportunity to integrate road with water harvesting. About 70,000 kilometers of road is added in Sub-Saharan Africa. That means if you see the beyond uh, Ethiopia, so the potential is so huge. That means we have about 90,000 new opportunities a year because we said in 100 kilometers, if we have more than 100 opportunities, then in 70,000 kilometers of roads, we have a lot of opportunity to manage water. 
Water demand is increasing because of the ongoing irrigation development in Ethiopia and even. And I think the magic of bringing different institutions and communities together was very, very uh, uh, interesting as well. So this has created a lot of uh, cooperation. That means linking groundwater with livelihoods, with road development can really have multiple benefits that we need to work out further. And this could be a future opportunity for creating road development as part of the whole climate smart landscape development, as part of the green infrastructure development, and we convert the negative aspect into positive, whereby everybody will be happy and the whole landscape well where roads are going to be uh, developed. And we have this dream. I think we'd like to acknowledge uh, the uh, different uh, uh, institutions. Of course, we have the research partners, mainly the institutions in Ethiopia who have been really implementing that, like the Tigray Bureau of Water Resource, the Tigray Bureau of Transport, Road and Construction, the Tigray Bureau of Agriculture and Rural Development, REST, the Oromia Bureau of Water, Mines and Energy, and the Oromia Bureau of uh, Road and Transport, the Ethiopian Roads Authority, who have been really very cooperative. And this project has been funded by uh, the NERC and uh, also uh, DEFEAT or part of the uh, project. And we have also the ASRC who is really supporting us in this, uh, in this project. And we would like to really thank them for their great uh, support. And uh, thank you uh, very much. All what we see during the road uh, survey was to have very, very interesting landscapes that uh, we really uh, enjoyed working with and uh, thank you for the for the audience